Hello, I love you, Vain, gloriously wonderful people. This is the Fister Comet S2 Cabrio. And I'm about to find out if it'll off-road. We are returning, now that the snow has finished, to the contract DLC vehicles. So we still have quite a few to go. We've only done two, the Champion and the Ignis? Ignus. I don't know how to say it. I think it's Ignis. Uh, but we've only done those two, so these are our next two. So what, there's 14 vehicles, 13 vehicles in the DLC? I don't remember exactly. A lot of SUVs, though, like a lot of SUVs. Ooh, getting some weird air there. Uh, we kind of just jumped up. This car behaves a little weird at times, uh, but I really like it. Uh, when I'm recording this, it just came out uh, this previous Thursday. And I'm, I'm really happy with the car. I, I like the way it drives. I think it drives better than the hardtop, especially since uh, this one can get the, uh, well, a lot of people call it double clutch. It's a misnomer. Uh, it can get the midline speed boost. Uh, and the hardtop cannot any longer. I mean, it does, but it doesn't go anywhere, which is kind of realistic if you think about it. If you hit the rev limiter, it cuts the car's power in real life. It doesn't make it go faster. Uh, so, I mean, if anything, the hard top actually behaves more uh, like reality, but it is kind of nice to get that speed boost. Um, struggling a little bit to keep the back end behind me, but not too bad. Also getting a lot of wheel spin out of the car. Uh, but again, nothing that I can't control. It, it was all fairly simple. Just a matter of, you know, finding that spot, as, as always with the sports cars and high-performance cars, Finding the spot where I was uh, putting power down and going forward instead of just spinning my wheels. Because um, obviously if you're just spinning your wheels, you're not going to get a very good time. Uh, also, if you smack into the side of the mountain, you're not going to get a very good time. Actually, this car gets a pretty decent time overall. Um, I was really happy with how it performed. It, it's pretty flawless. Hey, make sure you're playing World of Road Bingo. The link is in the description down below. Once you get to that web page, you click on uh, generate a new card and then you tap and click on things as they happen in the video. And if you win bingo, then you put it in the comments down below. Uh, we've had five, I believe, bingo winners so far. Uh, I would love for you to be the next one. I've yet to win and I make the videos. I try my best to get stuff in that I know is on the card, but just so I can win. Like, you know, so if I'm trying to make it so I can win, you know you should have an easy time too. I just never get very lucky with my bingo cards. Um, it's just the way it goes. But yeah, play along with Wheel Off-Road Bingo. Um, but the Comet S2 flying right up the mountain, beautiful sunrise uh, to match the, uh, the bright orange paint job on the car. I think it goes very nicely together. And I love the active arrow spoiler on this. Um, I didn't know that the Commodus 2 had an active arrow spoiler if you didn't add a spoiler. But we are up. Two minutes, 46 seconds. So, will it off-road? Yeah. As everybody honks the horns at me. Um, I think they were trying to, like, imitate car alarms at one point. I, I don't know. Uh, smaller group today. We have uh, another Cabrio, an original Comet, and a Zentorno. And the Zentorno, you might think one of these things is not like the other, but if you stop and think about it, in real life, Lamborghini, VW, and for the most part, Porsche, all part of the VW group. Like, Porsche owns part of VW, VW owns part of Porsche. They share a lot of stuff and platforms, especially in their SUVs. Uh, so, well, Okay, donkey, that's one way to get on the mountain. Um, and, uh, you know, so in GTA, Lamborghini, oh, by the way, Lamborghini as well, you know, that's in there, and Audi, all that's VW group stuff. Um, so Pegasi and Fister, Lamborghini and Porsche, kind of makes sense that Jay Bose was in his Entorno. It, it fits. Uh, however, that 246.15 makes the Comet Fister S2 Cabrio, got its long name, uh, 65th out of 324 vehicles as of this video. Uh, so, pretty good standing. Uh, it is 0 0.2 seconds slower than an Anis Euros, and it got the exact same time as the original Vapid Retinue. 
So pretty good company. Uh, in sports cars, out of 64 that we've tested today, as of today, uh, it is 20th in sports, so holding on to a top third. Uh, again, it is the same as zeros, and it is 0 0.08, so eight hundredths of a second faster up the mountain than a Tropos Rally, which is interesting. Because Tropos Rally definitely made for uh, this type of stuff, whereas... This is more made, you know, for cruising down the boulevard, looking good, uh, put the top up and maybe go racing in it. But uh, yeah, it's a good looking car. Uh, I took my design off from my hard top uh, and put it on this car. Uh, if you saw my video for the release of this car, I then transferred that design with the gray and magnesium colored wheels over to the hard top and it looks much better. Um, I was really pleased with the swap. If I remember, I'll put a picture, but I probably won't remember. Um, and we are down in two minutes, 29 seconds. People are going flying off the side, but they didn't get the best landing, so I didn't really... Be, they landed way off camera, uh, so we didn't get too much of a shot of that. So, we're on our way down, and this car has a couple extra things that can break than our normal vehicles. We're going to want to keep an eye on that active aero spoiler. And then at the end, we're also going to want to check out how the uh, convertible top does. Because you can break a convertible top in GTA. Uh, it, I mean, it doesn't fall off. That would be hilarious. Uh, it really would be. It's like the top, the whole mechanism just fell out of the car. Uh, but they can break so that they don't function any longer. Um, I thought this was done for. And surprisingly, it's just like, yeah, sure, I'll climb in your vertical hill. Whatever, I think we've already broke the, the spoiler. It it looks like it's trying to come up. Yeah, we've already broke the spoiler, look at that. Uh, I decided since, you know, this thing isn't, you know, gonna be anything to race in the sports class that I'd be okay without the spoiler edition because if you change the spoiler, you do get added traction, but if you change the spoiler, you lose. Oh, I thought I was gonna, I really thought I was gonna throw the needle. You lose uh, the active arrow effect and i kind of like the uh the spoiler popping up when i'm driving around it's just a neat little look um as far as my character hasn't reached out the door or reached out to close the door never mind closed itself and we rolled over through our final tunnel a little bit sideways so there's no way i'm making it over the wood pile don't know why i even tried but hey whatever we're down in a very hazy morning one minute 32 seconds donkey did clear the wood pile and we'll take a look at our damage. The windshield is gone. All the lights are gone. The doors won't close. The hood is missing. The convertible top is indeed broken. The active arrow also broken. Has bent wheels and some body damage as well. Of course, we have to take a look at our support vehicles. Commander Hobo's car especially got really uh, banged up. For anyone where the gunfire is, well, you can see a redneck back there. And yeah, now Donkey's dealing with him. That's what all the noise is about. But that's going to bring us to our next vehicle an odd pairing today but hey gotta get that algorithm the mammoth patriot <clears throat> let's try that again the mammoth patriot mil spec um yes that was a tula that you just saw in our spin around shot here it's made by mammoth and you know i guess going for the manufacturing theme hobo decided to go with a tula I, it's been a while since we had a plane take part in Willet Off-Road. And if you're new to this series, yes, we've had planes take part in Willet Off-Road and helicopters and boats and trailers full of gasoline. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit of oversteer there. Uh, I really like the Patriot Mill spec. My only complaint about it is it seems to have a really high off-road traction loss value, which slows it down in the dirt. And that's just disappointing because it can go faster on pavement than in the dirt. And, I, you know, that's not too unrealistic. You don't want to be doing 90 miles an hour down a dirt trail. Um, but at the same time, this is in the off-roads class. And to have it slow down as significantly as it does, and it's noticeable. If you own one of these, take it on a dirt road, like a flatter dirt road, uh, without a lot of corners. There, there's some out by Fort Zancudo. And you'll you'll be able to tell immediately that it just it feels like it's just bogged down that it's just being really 
constrained, and it is. Um, the good news is that despite that, it still climbs great. Like, even at really slow speeds, like right here, I floored it, and no wheel spin, all grip. So that ultra low gearing, I guess, that this thing has is really good. Matter of fact, through a lot of this, I'm full throttle. Um, there, that was full throttle. Not a bit of wheel spin. It's just grip. Uh, it's just also not a very fast thing. And of course it's not. It's a huge hunk of American steel that's box shaped. It's not going to be fast. But uh, if you want to check out an ad-free extended version of Will It Off-Road, you can do so with the behind the scenes version. It looks like Hobo's already having some trouble there. Uh, you can do so with the behind the scenes version of Bullet Off Road that is available to channel supporters and on the Vainglorious Discord server in the Vainglorious Supporters channel. And of course, to get access to that channel, you will want to be either a member here on YouTube by clicking on the join button, making a pledge over at patreon.com forward slash Vainglorious Gaming. Boy, that was good timing that that one came up on the screen as I was talking about it. Or if you were a Twitch subscriber, whether you've paid for that subscription, used Twitch Prime, or were gifted a subscription. All three of those, if you have those respective services linked to your Discord profile, will automatically grant you access to the supporters channel on our Discord, where I post the link to the behind the scenes video, which is ad free. And instead of my commentary, I hobo, you should sit there. No, you're not. Uh, <laughs> it's ad free. And instead of my commentary, you hear our Discord conversation. Uh, and it does include uh, all the stuff I edit out of the public videos. So it's definitely worth checking out. If you're interested in supporting the channel, that's a little added perk that you get, along with other behind the scenes stuff that shows up from time to time. We're up just barely over three minutes. So will it off road? Yeah. You know, we say three minutes is the magic number, but for something that doesn't have a whole lot of speed, I'm willing to say this was still a good time because it was a fairly effortless run. How is Hobo going to fly back down with two engines already missing? I don't know. That's a Hobo problem. Um, <laughs> we do get to see a couple shots of him flying, though. But this thing's really great off-road. I love it. Uh, it handles the bumps really well. Has really solid braking, even in the dirt. So even if you get yourself into a hairy situation, you should be able to slow down there. I, I nearly stopped because I forgot how good the brakes were on it. Um, it's just, it's a solid off-roader. Like, despite that off-road traction loss, it just does really well in off-road environments. Uh, whether it be here on the mountain, just on dirt trails, or even climbing really steep, like, shorter hills, it, it does really well. I've been, I've been very happy with it, and I love all the customization options that you can have for this thing. Um, you can just get so many different... Cool look, so please don't crash to me, Hobo. Please don't crash to me, Hobo. I was waiting to hear him go bonk. Oh, there he went bonk into the side of the hill. I heard it. <laughs> he just kind of bumped into the side of the mountain over there. Man, I'm surprised that plane's still in the air, to be honest. I think it dies on him at some point, and he glides it down. Um, I, I, I can't remember that. I'm recording this voice over the same day that we recorded the video, but it's been close to 12 hours ago so but yeah see how it just landed on that jump just like no effort it, it's just a really good off-road vehicle um i couldn't be happier with it for taking an off-roader it, it offered and it'd probably be one of my preferred off-roaders from now on just because of how whoa, whoa that's a dive uh just because of how easy it is to drive off road and how easily it gets itself in uh or up up a hill and out of situations it's not the best in deep deep water it doesn't have a snorkel so you know you you can only go up to about middle of doors before it dies um and it does have trouble pushing through the water with any kind of speed it slows way down as soon as you get the deep water um so you got to be careful. You got to make sure you've got the speed or the water isn't so deep that you're going to drown. One of the two. I went through water deep enough to drown it, but I had enough speed that it didn't drown. Though so it really slowed down at the end and I got scared that I was going to kill it. But hey. Uh, oh. Um, okay. Hi. Uh, 
really good breaks, but not quite good enough. We're down two minutes, 41 seconds. We should probably get out of here. There we go, back to the top of the mountain where we have some Avengers uh, waiting and a hobo in a uh, fresh copy of his Sula just ready to join us on the damage descent. I don't really know how Hobo is going to do a damage descent. It's not like he's just going to turn the plane off and let it fall. I don't know. I think he just flew down. Uh, but yeah, he's just flying. Oh, no. He didn't turn the engines off, it looks like. That thing's falling. Or maybe he's just dive bombing to get a checkpoint because uh, an air checkpoint challenge was going right here by the mountain uh, while we were doing this. Like, you can see checkpoints all through this damage descent. I can't get off my roof here. There we go. It was doing its best impression of a turtle. Um, well, you know, strike colors, I guess. There we go. Now we're moving. Thing just bouncing all around the hills. There's Donkey, so it looks like he's not getting down very fast either. It gets, it's big, so it gets caught on a lot of the rocks and the trees. You know, it's to be expected. Yeah, Donkey definitely had some issues, because I'm now out ahead of him. Well, not anymore. There he goes. <laughs> I like the design Donkey has on his as well. Uh, there's Donkey's hood joining me. Ow, I hit that tree so hard it took some of my health. Holy crap. Um, I think I just rolled over end over end just right there. Uh, the engine died for a minute. Uh, for, a minute uh, for a minute. It, it didn't want to It didn't want to go. I uh, kind of really want to ram the hobo's plane. Uh, not quite close enough. Oof. Also, once again, missing thread the needle on all of these. It's really hard to get. Something as big as the Patriot through those tunnels uh, easily. I don't know what happened there, uh, how I managed to roll over. I guess I just bounced off the rock at just the right angle. Uh, what's really great is here at the end, um, gonna go for a nice jump, doesn't pay off, donkey slams me into the pile, and then I go sideways roll, that's a new one, uh, back down the hill, but I'm not worried about it. This thing climbs easy if I don't hit a rock first, but look, just right up. No effort whatsoever. Once again, Hobo with his blade. We're down two minutes, nine seconds. So let's take a look at the damage on the Mammoth Patriot mill spec. Most of the lights are gone, including the LED light bars. The left door is missing. The hood will not close. There is surprisingly body damage. Not a lot, but there are some dents here and there. Uh, and a couple of the wheels are ever so slightly bent. Like I had to look at it frame by frame a couple times. But there is definitely a bit of camera going on, especially on that right front and left front wheel. Uh, there are support vehicles. Uh, Donkey got battered pretty bad. Hobo, once again, has uh, engines on fire. So, yeah, rough, rough damage descent all around for everyone. But that's going to do it for Willard Off-Road for this week. We'll be back with more contract vehicles next week. And until then, I'm Brandon reminding you to stay vainglorious.